Welcome back to our truck camper renovation series. In this episode, we're going to talk about all those little projects that didn't really get their own place in a video. So we'll start on the inside. And for me, one of the bigger um, aesthetics that needed to be done inside was the curtains. The original curtains were purple and blue. Yeah, and all RV curtains are awful, aren't they? <laughs> They're so awful. Uh, we had velour toppers and purple and blue sort of cotton slide to the side curtains and a few metal mini blinds. And it all came out and got replaced with some new curtains that are very simple and basic. Just a flat curtain that you can change levels on. They're room darkening as well as thermal insulated to keep the heat and the cold where they belong. Very similar design to what Marianne put in the Diesel Duchess and they worked really well. So we kind of went with the same thing again. Yeah. The next thing was the flooring. Mm -hmm. This camper had the old linoleum flooring. With old carpet or with carpet sort of loosely laid on top of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so carpet, you don't want carpet. Preferably really. not. And then so we ripped that out. Then there's old linoleum. So yeah. then we ripped that out too. And then we scraped the floor. Yeah, scraped the floor, sanded it down a bit <laughs> and put in just a basic stick on vinyl. It's vinyl, I think, or yeah, rubbery vinyl. It's like a rubbery yeah. vinyl with it. It has in it, the, the back you peel off um, kind of like a sticker kind of thing. So the hope was that it would kind of move with the camper um yeah it's it was not an easy install it's fast and easy it's probably not the best choice and <laughs> you're supposed to you know have a very smooth floor surface and then paint it so it sticks really well which we didn't have the time to do that so, so we'll, it would have stuck better yeah so we'll as the um as our journey goes on we're going to provide updates on how all of our little renos worked out for us. So probably, you know, like halfway through, we'll do one, either that, or we'll do a, an update at the end of our journey to say, this is what worked and what didn't. Yeah, because when you build a whole rig like that, there's things that aren't gonna work. Like as much as you try and think it through and do what you know or what you think will work, everything doesn't work. Not everything. So you kind of figure it out on the road. So moving to the exterior, um, we removed all of the original decals. So all. Well, Are they decals or decals? I guess it depends where you're from. I don't even know which uses which. So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know if it's a Canadian versus an American thing. I don't know. Yeah, think, we removed is, all the stickers, stickers from the outside. Stickers. <laughs> and actually, we didn't remove the stickers. We brought in professionals to do it. The exterior of the Bigfoot is a fiberglass shell, correct? Yes, and it's a fiberglass with a gel coat. Right. And I don't know, maybe somebody that's dealt with Bigfoot stickers before knows better than us, but when the, the colored stickers were taken off, it still left a white layer yep. that that doesn't scrape off. You'd have to sand it off. And it, yeah, it doesn't buff out either. No. So, but we left it and we really liked it. Yeah, it's kind of like ghosted in now. You yeah. can still see them there, but they're ghosted in very mm -hmm. close to the white color of the gel coat. We didn't want to sand it down and no, have and get it, and, you know, just in case we had to fix the gel coat or anything. We just didn't really want to get into that and we liked the look of it. Yep. So the color's gone but they're still there. They're still there. And and then we had the same professionals that took the old stickers off, put some new stickers on for us. So there are three different thicknesses of um, width. pinstriping, width of pinstriping that's on there. Um, two yellow and one black that meticulously got put on. And then I had designed up our um, social media handle, as well as our logo and some QR codes that got done by a company out of Sault Ste. Marie. Um, they printed them, I designed them up, sent them to the company. Superior, Superior 7. Superior 7. Uh, thank you, Shane. You did a wicked job. 
he did got those all printed up for me and then um, Gord installed them onto the camper. And then we looked at the front and I said, it's just too blank up front. And we, we need something. We there. need a Bigfoot, man. So. Yeah. So instead of getting a factory Bigfoot yeah, I went sticker. On, I went on Etsy and I found a company that had some um, Bigfoot graphics and we picked our Bigfoot. And so now he's at the front and he greets everybody yeah, that waves people at us coming on the on, you know, People coming to meet us. I'm not going to say head on because we don't want to meet not anybody head on. Head on. But, you know, people going in the opposite, opposite direction than us that see the rig and, you know, when it's coming down the road, it doesn't look like a normal vehicle. And so it kind of gets people's attention. And I think when they see that Bigfoot throwing out the peace sign, everybody smiles. Yeah. So if you see us coming down the road, give us a peace sign or a wave. And then after that, we continue to look at the rig. And there's where the top part of the shell of the camper and the bottom shell meet. There's this trim trim yeah rubber trim that goes the along. standard rv aluminum trim that has the rubber insert yeah it covers all the screws it. where yeah. you where you put the shells together um it was white and old uh so like me <laughs> so we pulled it off it was ridiculously gross there was like life forms living underneath it it was just ick so but pulled it all off and replaced it with a new black insert. So that's why when you look at it, the rig, it actually looks like there's four layers of pinstripe, but one is actually the new rubber suit. Yeah, and it really kind of tied in the white camper to the yellow truck, having that little bit of black and yellow there. And uh, it looks like it's supposed to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Then inside the truck, I was planning to build a center console and when I started to look, it was wet underneath the floor mat because it's a rubber floor mat with that insulation stuff. So I ended up ripping everything out and doing a bunch of repainting, resealing before I even started that. And um, I had the seats out and everything. Then I built a big center console and incorporated a few things into that that we wanted. You know, the air ride seat controls, some drink holders, um, wired in an inverter so we have AC power in the truck so Marianne can charge her computer when we're driving mm -hmm. or if we need to run anything else. Um, we don't have DC to DC uh, power run back to the camper to charge the batteries while we're driving. Um, I haven't put any provision for that but I think I will if we do need more power. I will just run an extension cord back from the inverter and hook up to shore power on the camper and charge the batteries that way with AC power. But maybe we won't need it, but we'll figure that out on the road. And then behind our seats in the cab, uh, we it did have a full size rear seat uh, back there. Uh, we took it out because we wanted that extra storage behind our seats. So Gord built I keep calling it a platform. I don't really yeah, know what else platform, to call it. It's really? like a big yeah. table that sits. We just figured out what seats. we were going to put underneath, and then we just made the platform high enough, and then we can throw our day to day things on top. Which is great. Yeah. And so it really keeps things somewhat organized. Yeah. I got my tools and pellet smoker underneath. I can take those out as I need them, and um, they're always accessible. And because we're towing the Jeep, and really, if anybody else was behind us too, we don't want to throw rocks or whatever off of these huge tires with the big lugs so we needed some mud flaps so i had to design up something that could mount mud flaps um, so i came up with an idea there and it seems to be working out okay other than the mud flaps were really old i had them laying around and they kind of disintegrated started to disintegrate <laughs> so i had to trim them off a bit so we still do have mud flaps just not as long as they were and um maybe i'll change them i don't know we'll see after about a, oh, geez, probably 1,500 kilometers of driving, which was our test runs um, after we bought the big tires and our test, we did about a 1,000 kilometer shakedown run in Ontario. With the camper on. Um, we could see some little marks on the f rear fenders, on the front of the rear fenders, just like the tire might get really close to them. Um, 
and because we're going to be going in some off-road spots and that it's definitely going to travel more than the shakedown run we did so i just took out the grinder and hacked some fender off <laughs> nothing fancy um i would have liked to finish them up a little bit more but you know time permits a certain amount of work and um that's where we got future project cut fenders because we have the camper lifted 10 inches off the bed of the truck that gave us provision for a little bit of storage space under there mm -hmm. i when i framed it in i left the back open as much as i could if you look at our video called what's it called <laughs> where we put the camper in the truck securing our camper to our monster truck in that video it shows you know how we have that space in there well then we did make a door after to close that in mm -hmm. um just made up a quick door and uh, it hinges and latches closed just to keep anything in there in there our camper door still had the original lock on it it was a little bit um old old <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it oh. didn't work very smoothly and we yeah. wanted keyless entry because yeah. having a key with you all the time isn't best. So Gord installed a new uh, keyless entry that works on a little remote but also has um, like a code, touchpad, like a touchpad for a security code, code that you can put on code, it. code, number code. <laughs> Which works really great. And it's not super high quality, I guess. No. It's an Amazon thing. I don't know if it came from China or what, um, but um, it works, it works not so much with the remote. So yeah, it works good with the keypad so far. So we'll keep you updated. Yeah, on the that keypad one. seems to work really, really well. So, but yeah, we're happy our door with it. only opened once so far with the with the remote. No, opened while oh, we were driving down the road. The, down the, yeah, yeah, I think maybe I didn't latch it right. My fault, maybe. And then um, the. Final one, I guess, would be a, a mount for our Starlink. We have a Starlink Roam. And so Gord sort of fashioned a bit of a, a mount up at the top of our ladder that when we park up, he can hook up our Starlink. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Throw it up, book, and uh, we're in action in minutes. And uh, yeah, it's not, it's just a, basically a piece of pipe mounted up on the ladder. So it works well. As we go along, um, on the road, as things break or we add new things to the rig, we're going to do short little videos. They're not going to be the longer videos like uh, like our renovation series, but we may have like a like a Tech Tuesday kind of thing where it Trump, won't be Troubles Thursday. Hopefully, Tech Tuesday, Tech Tuesday or Troubles Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. We don't have a video every week because that would be just craziness. But if we do, we do. Um, it'll come up. We'll let you know as we yeah, start There's definitely down this. projects that need to get done even yeah. right now. Yeah. You know, you work out things as you go on the road. You have new things pop up. And I have lots of tools and some know-how. So we're going to get it done as we go. And we'll keep you guys posted as to the things we get done and the things that go wrong and the things that go right. For sure. So thanks for watching our renovation series. Uh, we will have one more video after this one where we give you the walkthrough. Yes, the, the full walkthrough. The full final walkthrough of the uh, interior and exterior of the rig. So watch for that. In the meantime, thanks for watching. See you. Thanks. <laughs>